How was my Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Team Tournament experience? Did I paint my army on time? Is Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game really that good? Stay tuned to find out more. With the release of the new Battle for Osgiliath box set for the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, many of us attempted to pull the trigger on the new starter set. But if you're like me, you still got the previous starter set sitting on your cupboard and filled with unpainted minis. A Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game team tournament was held a little while back in Perth, Western Australia. I didn't have a ticket, but I registered myself as an emergency player. I wanted to use the possibility of a call up as added motivation to get my Rohan army painted in seven days. As the days went by, there was no call and my motivation began to sag. But with two days out from the tournament, the call went up. The beacons were lit and Rohan answered, but was my army painted and ready to go? Before we talk about the painting challenge or the team tournament games, there's a few things I want to say about the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game in general. The first is that it's a super fun and thematic game to play. The second is that the community around the game is just amazing. I've never felt so welcomed by a gaming community before. From my teammates, to my opponents, to the tournament organiser, everyone just oozed passion for the source material. And it was a really pleasant experience. I also have to give a very special mention to my teammates, Jack, Joe and Jai. I was Jave for the day, by the way. They were incredibly welcoming and super helpful on the day. It was a kind of experience I hadn't had, to be honest, at a tournament before. So thank you guys, much appreciated. I hope we can do it again sometime. I think for many of us, there's something special about the source material that moves us on a deep and emotional level. And it's this shared love of something sacred that brings everyone together to form positive communities around the game. I liken my experience at the team tournament to visiting Rivendell and being a guest of Elrond and being refreshed and rejuvenated and ready to launch back into a new hobby project. Going forward, I'm going to routinely go back to Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game when I need to refresh, rejuvenate and get my hobby mojo back. That being said, if you're looking to get into a game with a great community, then don't look any further than the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. It really does have the best community out there. Next, I want to talk about how the game plays. I come from the perspective of a casual 40k player. And to me, the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game has a much better ebb and flow to it that makes you feel like you're in a real battle as a general. The rules are far less abstract and more thematic. As the commander of the Rohan army, I always felt that I was in the middle of an epic conflict. And that's the hobby magic. That's where you want to be when you're playing a game. If you're just thinking about math and points and objectives, then 90% of the fun, at least for me, is gone. What's really special are those moments where characters do something heroic. And that's what this game excels at. The characters and heroes in this game really stand out. Part of that comes down to the might points attribute and that allows heroes to do heroic actions. And there's many different heroic actions that have different effects on the battlefield and they can swing the course of the battle in your favor as a general. Another aspect that makes the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game really good is the reduced cognitive load. You don't have to worry about peripheral codex rules like stratagems that really take up a lot of your mental RAM when you're playing the game at a tournament, at least for me. The game is still complex. I mean, the terrain rules are probably more complex than the terrain rules in 40K. But once you've got the gist of the basic game, then you're just in there. You're rolling dice, you're having fun. It's not like you're going into a friggin' exam. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're going into an exam room at school and you're going, God, what if my opponent thinks that I'm trying to do the wrong thing because I can't remember the 50 different rules in my army or in my opponents? gotcha moments and I mean these do occur in middle earth strategy battle game okay there is abstract rules interactions but there's just there's just less of them and the base rules are easier to understand they're more fun they're more thematic and I can't say enough anyway let's let go of 40k I still love the 40k game so it's not as if I'm going to stop playing it I love my blood angels my votan my necrons but my experience with the middle earth strategy battle game just show me what else was out there and what is possible with a rule set. How good can rule sets get? And this rule set has been refined over a period of 10, 20 years into something that's mwah, ooh la la. Now let's get to the Rohan Army Painting Challenge. If anyone has been following along with the channel so far, then you know one of the key topics is 
the seemingly impossible task of finishing hobby projects and then getting a fully painted set of miniatures to the table so you can experience the hobby to its fullest extent. But sometimes it just seems beyond my reach. I'm easily distracted. I'm prone to procrastination. I'm slow, careful and deliberate with the brush. As much as I dislike playing games with unpainted miniatures, I detest rushing my paint jobs and painting my miniatures poorly and then regretting the result. With enough foreshadowing, let's move on to the painting challenge itself. Okay, wait, stop, stop, stop. Let's not do this. I was gonna give you a detailed rundown every day of the seven days in my painting challenge. I was gonna go over my trip down south to the great southern region of Western Australia and how my intention was always to use the trip as inspiration so I could record footage of me painting Rohat minis in epic locations reminiscent of Middle Earth such as the great Carry Forest of Pemberton, the beautiful Blackwood River and the murky silhouette of the Stirling Range Mountains. I would have then gone on and told you how I had so much fun adventuring that I forgot to do any painting. This was going to be followed by a long-winded story of how when I arrived home the next two days I spent researching the natural colouring of horses and the best way to render realistic horse hair on a mini. And then how I had to re-sculpt poorly rendered details on old models with green stuff and a hobby knife and scrape them back to bare plastic after priming the minis and layering on the first coat of green paint. Or how I spent two days reading and relearning the rules so I would actually be able to play the game on the day of the tournament minutes of me waffling on like that would just sound like a long-winded excuse. So the thoughtful person I am, I've just given you the very short version of that excuse. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So without much further ado, here are the results for my painting challenge. So it was another army challenge failure, but going through this process again, some patterns are starting to emerge and I'm collecting some data on my own processes that I think are gonna help going forward. And I think it's good to show everyone out there that it's not easy finishing painting projects. You watch YouTube sometimes and you'll see beautifully painted miniatures and you know, in 30 minutes they've done a slap chop and they're throwing on these highlights and the thing looks like it's going to go into Golden Demon. And you can be sitting at home going, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do that? Anyway, I'm hoping that some of you can at least relate to my struggles and think, well, I'm not the only one who has this problem of being a slow painter. For example, to complete the challenge in the time that I had available, I would have needed to paint six times faster than my current painting speed to make that happen. Even more ego destroying is the fact that it would have taken me 250 hours of dedicated, uninterrupted painting time to get even close to finishing the full Rohan army of 31 models. Now I established this painting speed by doing two test models after the event. I just didn't have time to do a test model before the event. I was just so flustered and overwhelmed and things weren't happening. I just wanted to get some paint on the models. So I didn't look like an idiot. But here are the test models. They took about eight hours per model, but I want the whole army to be at this standard with these, this color scheme and I'll be a happy man if that's done. Wish me luck in the future. But without further ado, let's move on to the best part of this episode, and that's the team tournament event. And it has to be said that team tournaments are just the best events. If all you want to do is just go and have some fun playing your favorite game, rolling dice with a bunch of cool people. And that's exactly what I did. I've never felt more welcome to a gaming community than I did going to this event. So hats off to Lockie, all the players, all my opponents, my teammates, for putting on such a super cool event. 
Now I was going to give you a full overview of the entire tournament with a detailed rundown of each of the games that I had, but the script for this episode just got out of control and it nearly stopped me making the episode altogether. Hence the delay with it coming out. So instead I'm just going to give you a more detailed narrative focus account of my first game and then give you the highlights of the remaining games of the tournament and my experience at the event. Now I hope you enjoy the style of battle that I'm going to be presenting. I apologize for the photos that have been taken. I'm hoping going forward that I'm going to be taking more photos with more cinematic shots and obviously having my own painted army on the field would help a lot as well. But with this style of battle report, I'm trying to give you an impression of how it felt to play the game from my perspective and demonstrate how well the rules align with the story and the theme from the source material and how it just makes for gameplay moments that match the films for their epicness. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's move on to my army list. So The Two Towers is my favorite movie out of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and probably my favorite movie of all time nearly. And the Helm's Deep scene is probably my favorite cinematic experience. And I wanted my army to loosely represent the forces of Rohan in that scene. So 550 points is what I had to work with. So I just made things simple for myself by choosing my army straight from the basic Lord of the Rings Army's book. The army included four warbands. The first warband was led by Theoden, King of Rohan, who was also the army's leader. And he was followed by eight riders of Rohan, just with swords and bows and shields. Warband two was Irma, Marshal of the Riddlemark. He had four riders of Rohan in his warband, all armed with throwing spears and shields. Warband three was just Eowyn on her own, on foot with a shield. Warband four was Haldir on his own. Now he was a historical ally, so it didn't affect any of my basic army rules. And that's it, there we have it. The army clocked in at 542 points. Now, before I continue with the narration of the first battle, I just want to point out that all of my opponents, there was Tyler, Josh, Greg, and Harry, were just scholars and gentlemen, and really made me feel welcome, friendly, happy, and a pleasure to play against. So thank you guys. Now, as far as the team strategy goes, I didn't really have much involvement. I'm too much of a new player. I wouldn't have even known where to start. Um, but I just told my captain, team captain, Joe, that because I'm inexperienced, uh, just use me as cannon fodder. And if you've got some bad matchups, um, I was happy to take the bad matchup if I could in some way benefit my other teammates because it's unlikely that I was gonna win any games. This way, despite the fact that I'd probably lose all my games, I could still contribute to the overall team strategy. That was the plan anyway. And so it begins. Game one was against Tyler. He was playing a beautifully painted Urukai Scout Marauder Force led by Lurts. He had a good mix of archers and dedicated close combat warriors with swords and shields. There was also a drummer and a banner in the list. The mission was Domination, which is all about controlling a set of five objectives. As a 40k player, controlling objectives was something I understood and I was eager to start my first game. That was until the war drums begin to sound. Tyler was able to win the initiative and use his drummer to move his main battle line forward far quicker than I had anticipated and take control of the crucial centre objective and then set up a defensive position blocking my path. King Theoden scanned the battlefield and with no obvious weak point he could exploit in the Uruk lines, he began giving a rousing speech that called for Lurtz's head, cursing the foul spawn of Sauron as a bane to the people of Rohan. Theoden's speech ended with a bloodthirsty war cry, followed by an all-out charge. I hoped that Theoden and his warband of eight riders could break through Tyler's battle line and steal the objective. With the riders of Rohan closing fast, Lurtz ordered his forces to raise their shields and prepare for impact. Roars of defiance then erupted from the Uruk battle lines, but they could not be heard over the thunder of horses' hooves. I kept Irma's warband back on the right-hand side of the battlefield in reserve in case Theoden's charge failed. The Rohan champion looked on with pride as his king and uncle led the Rohan force by example, but Irma would be ready to rush to Theoden's aid in an instant if anything went bad. 
Haldir, who had been sent by Gladriel to shadow theater, he spotted a group of Uruk archers and he let loose an arrow with speed, grace and accuracy, toppling an Uruk archer. The elf captain hoped to draw away attention from the charging theater. Eowyn held another objective behind a ruin not far from the Uruk position in the center of the battlefield. She was close enough so that she could aid Theoden if things went badly, and the shield maiden of Rohan watched on with horror as things did go badly. Theoden's warband smashed into the Uruk line, sending a few of the Urukai flying back with splintered shields and crumpled armor, but their lines held. The famous charge of the Rohirrim didn't do the damage I had hoped, and as the fighting progressed, my riders were swamped with Urukai bodies, leaving Theoden isolated and in mortal danger. Haldir put an arrow into another Uruk, but could do little to aid Theoden as the main combat was now out of his line of sight. Eowyn abandoned her objective and joined the combat in the center in the hope of aiding her king, but was blocked by more Urukai warriors. She dodged and hacked, but didn't manage to bring one down. She then watched helplessly as the entire left flank of the main Rohan battle line was surrounded and mercilessly cut down by the men in the Urukai. The disaster culminated with her uncle Theoden being dragged from his horse and slaughtered. At this point, a shriek of anguish erupted from Eowyn. As her special rule kicked in, all thoughts of returning to hold the objective were abandoned as she struggled to fight her way towards Theoden's lifeless body. I withdrew the remainder of Theoden's warband to join with Irma's warband of riders on the right flank. Irma also had a special rule that activated when Theoden was killed. It's called the Price of Grief and it gives him plus one on his wound rolls, making him a more deadly combatant. But it also meant that he had to charge if he was able to do so, and charge he did. The Uruks were going to pay. He held his spear aloft and then pointed it at the Uruks, loitering in the ruins on the right. Irma led his warband and charged into Tyler's right flank, and managed to bring down a couple of the Urukai. But things were looking grim. After sniping another Urukai warrior with his bow, Haldir jumped off his perch to try and contest the far left objective but the distance was too great. And while Eowyn managed to deftly dodge and block and keep a group of Uruk busy by winning her combat, she couldn't break through to Theoden's body. The battle was over. Rohan had lost. The final score was zero victory points to me and five to Tyler. A victory for Lurtz and the forces of Isengard. That was my first experience at the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Tournament event. And I was totally immersed in the game. I wasn't thinking about rules. Um, I wasn't worried about forgetting things. I was just totally absorbed in what I was doing and having a ball. And my opponent, Tyler, was an excellent opponent. He was patient. He was friendly. And he even came up after the game and told me that I needed to not forget to use my throwing spears in Irma's warband. So thanks again, Tyler. He also had a really great painted army. Now, as far as my takebacks from the game, I really was impressed with Haldir, just the supporting fire throughout the whole game. I was also really impressed with Eowyn because she was super tough to kill. She was a real distraction for Tyler and a, a large group of Uruks. And in the end, he couldn't bring her down. Going forward, I really need to make better use of Irma because I had him back in reserve and he just couldn't get into the game in time. So I held him back for too long. In addition, my teammate Jai, who also had a Rohan army of uh, Helm Hammerhand, he told me that I need to be careful with my positioning for cavalry, otherwise my opponent would take advantage and get surrounds and bring them all down. So I took that to heart and implemented that advice in my next game. Thank you, Jai. Okay, on to the last games. Now, the last games were all a bucket of fun. I enjoyed the whole experience. It was really cool, and all of my opponents were super friendly. I lost all four games for the tournament. But here are some of the highlights of the many epic moments I had throughout the tournament. So, game two was against Josh and his beautifully painted Isengard force led by Soriman. The highlight of this game was the last turn, Eowyn managed to sneak around behind a rock and charged Saruman. Now Saruman had decimated my forces on one side of the board. And I don't know if you've ever played against Saruman, but if you line up your forces in a straight line, he'll use his Sorcerer's Blast and just push them all back into each other like dominoes. And I had horses and men flying all over the place. But in any case, Eowyn on the last turn managed to get around behind the rock and make a charge. She won the combat, managed to hit, managed to wound, but Saruman made his fate rolls, but it was still an epic moment. Game three was against Greg and his Rohan Forced. His was a legendary legion. 
Now, when I went into this game, I was thinking, ah, oh, it's not very thematic. I'm probably not going to enjoy it as much. But in my head, a narrative started to develop about a false king that Saruman had made. So I was continuing on with the Isengard theme. And that helped me get more enjoyment out of the battle. And it was a spectacle because there was two opposing cavalry forces fully charging into each other, turn one. No messing around, no subtle strategies, just boom. And there was massive melee combat in the center of the battlefield. And probably the epic moment of the game was not from my perspective, but from Greg's. So I think it was Deowine, his hero, managed to lop off a couple of my Rohan riders' heads with double sixes and broke through one side of my lines and then got through with his second rank of riders started getting surrounds and from that point on it was a downhill battle but an epic game the final game the fourth game was against harry and his wood elves led by thandral this game involved choosing secret characters and secret terrain pieces and i won't go into the details but there was a archery fight between legolas and haldir there was an epic moment where Irma threw his spear into Legolas's chest, only to be cut down by Thandral. Thandral? This game was quite close, and I probably had a chance of winning, but my force was broken, and I had a single rider who was sitting on a terrain piece holding it, and that would have scored me some points. But he ran away. He was all by himself. There was no enemies anywhere near him. And he ran away. I've put him in a special place on my cabinet. He is the last miniature who is going to get painted in this army, if at all. For my army and my favourite characters um, in the event, I'm going to have to give it to both Haldir and Eowyn. Both of these characters were just... didn't die. And Eowyn really was involved in some pivotal moments. And Haldir, he was just a workhorse. He was just... <laughs> launching those arrows taking down Uruk. So even Legolas would be proud with the kill count. I mean, even Gimli would be proud of the kill count that he had at the end of the tournament. So that was my entire tournament experience. I think the game scores went like this. The game won against Tyler's Isengard was 0 to 6. No, 0 to 5. Game 2 against Josh's Isengard with Saruman was 1 to 6. Game 3 against Greg was 0 to 4. And game four against Harry was four to eight. So I actually got some scores on the board with my final game. So I was starting to learn. What a super fun tournament. A great experience. Great people. Great game. Great rules. Great presentation from the venue and the organizer of the event. The terrain at this event was just super thematic and really cool. It's the best I've ever seen. I've got some pretty cool terrain, but compared to what was at this event, whew, amazing. And the level of hobby at this event was just something to behold. Um, so many armies had their display boards, really thematic, beautifully painted. And I mean, I'm sure some of these people are like me, just a little bit faster with their painting. And I wanna be one of you guys. So if you, any of you are watching, give me some tips. Give me some tips, seriously. Um, hats off to Lockie Rig again. Hats off to Beyond Odyssey. Hats off to Tyler, Josh, Greg, Harry, my teammates, Jai, Joe, Jack. What a super experience. Thanks to all you viewers for watching. Thank you for staying with me to the end of the video. Um, if, you, if you're here now, just click the like button, subscribe. Why not? Come on. Come on. What would Frodo do? You know what I'm saying? That's it from me. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. I hope you have an experience just like mine. I hope that you've looked at my painting struggles and thought, well, I'm not the only one. Other people struggle too. I'm David. This is the Mini Manifesto. May all your games be epic.